I'm going to take a look at normal distributions in staplet.com. This applet works in two directions. You can either calculate the area under a curve using values, or we can calculate the value corresponding to area. Um, let's start with just a mean of zero, a standard deviation of one, and just the default, calculate the area under the curve. When I have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, I'm really looking at a Z axis. This is called the standard normal distribution. Z is a standardized variable where um, really it just measures the number of standard deviations above or below the mean. So we put the mean here in the middle at zero and we're saying we're going one, two, three standard deviations above it, one, two, three below it. So there are limitations to this. We can't really go, we can't really visualize beyond three. Um, it would be difficult anyway, but this makes it really impossible. Um, and we also will struggle to calculate probabilities when we get to those fringes, where in Excel we really have a lot of precision to be able to calculate those out to um, maybe 10 digits of accuracy. An example of how you would use this, um, if you want to find the area between two values, so like I said, these are z-scores going from negative 1 to 1 is about 68.27%. That's just like the empirical rule says, um, and I can change these to 2, get 95% or 3, and get 99.7%, uh, just like the empirical rule says. You can also go um, to the left of a value. Here I'm going to pick something with a decimal, like 1.15 um, probability of being to the left of that. You can see that plotted. We're looking at that shaded region. That's 87.49% of the area under the curve or of the outcomes that we would see. So you can go left, right, outside, in between, um, lots of different options there. You can also change to decimals, you can add accuracy. Um, don't forget about those preferences down below. Now the other way to use it is to go backwards. Um, for example, if I have a left tail or a left area of 0.75, that would be like the 75th percentile. I'm saying that's 0.674 standard deviations to the right of the meme to have that area to the left. Um, you can do a right tail. You can do a central area. So like, let's say I want to look at the middle 50%, then that's going to be 0.5 in the center from negative 0.674 standard deviations to positive 674 standard deviations. Um, now going back to the beginning here and looking at an example that's not standardized, um, an example of this would be if I was looking at height. So one thing I can do is, um, it's hard to find exact information, but I'll just use Google. Um, I'll Google heights of uh, women in the United States. I have an average of five foot four inches. Now this one does not have the standard deviation. So I'm gonna search for that separately. This is saying 2.5 um standard deviations now this it may not be the most reliable source um, it's an example problem but let's go ahead and use it um, here we see 64.5 inches um, so that's at five foot four and a half um, but we'll go with those numbers 64.5 and 2.5 so now what we have is instead of a z-axis we've got an x-axis this is going to represent heights of women in the United States in inches. And we can look at percentiles, percentages, probabilities, things like that. Um, let's go to, to the left. So what's the probability of um, selecting someone at random who is less than 5 feet tall? That would be 60 inches. Um, we see that here, about 3.59%. Um, you can go higher than 72 that's another example. So that's very small. That's three standard deviations, 0.13%. Um, in between two values, you can do all kinds of different calculations. This time we're entering in inches or heights, and we're looking at probabilities or percentages of the population um, in the United States. We're looking at women, um, women's heights. Okay, the other way to do it is flip it around. Let's say I want to find the height that's at the 90th percentile. Um, I would want to go left tail 0.9, and I've got that values of 67.7 inches. Um, so that would be an applied problem, just using a mean and standard deviation that's known. 
Um, you can always use a standardized distribution first and just convert between X and Z. Um, there are formulas to do that as well.